Hi guys, it's Belle here and I'm back with day 23 of Junk Journal January. Can you believe the month's almost over? This is hosted by Meg Journals in collaboration with Get Messy Arts and I will leave all the links down below. And today's prompt is texture. Now, I like to use a lot of texture anyway in my crafting. Uh, so I've chosen this page because of the tea dyeing already having lots of texture and it's a grid page. So that gives it lots of texture there. And I'm going to create a little um, textured piece around this Tim Holtz photo. It's one of his snapshot ones, I believe. So the first thing I want to do, excuse my arm is I just want to trim this down a little bit because it's got this white-ish edge. So I'm just cutting that off to the side to trim it down a little bit. And then I'm really going to go in with my scissors. Do this carefully if you're using scissors. I know there's a tool out there, guys, but for the moment, scissors work just as well for me, so I'm fine with that. But yeah, do be careful. Doesn't matter if that's ripped, it adds texture. Um, yeah, it's there's so many ways of adding texture to a page. Um, I'm just going to ink around it in Walnut Stain Distress Oxide. I love adding texture because, I don't know, I just, a page feels weird for me if it hasn't got some sort of texture on it. Um... I'm quite a tactile person and um, yeah, I just like that. So that's going to be the centre. I'm going to come in with one of my tea bags again because this adds texture to a page. One, because you can actually manipulate it to give it ridges. But two, because of the actual... Um, pattern that the tea bags leave. So I'm going to come in and um, sort of mod podge that off to the side because I know I want that there. Use whatever matte medium you have. I don't mind mod podge. So that's what I'm using. I'm just going to put it on here. I did think about gessoing the background but I wanted the texture of the tea dyeing so that is fine let's add that on there and then go over the top of it yes yeah, so there's plenty of ways to add texture to a page you can do it by building up layers of inks and stamping you can do it with fabrics um, you can do it with papers, like handmade papers, crinkled papers. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of papers out there that can give. I love using handmade papers in my crafting. Um, okay, and I'm also going to add, this is a little bit of, um, oh, what's it called? Sewing pattern paper. I'm going to add that on there too. I like the lines, so I'm going to add that. I'm going to put that down. Um, I am not as comfortable with the techniques of paints and um, like stamping and things as of yet. So I prefer to use paste and papers and other things so yeah that's adding texture there too i just dropped the other piece but i do have another bit that i might use okay let's leave that like that for now and then i've got some edith holden paper down topaz Um, so I kind of want that as well as a bit of a background. But not too much because I still want to see some of that. So that will probably go on there. 
I have this fun piece. It was in my scrap box, my fodder box. You can see all the texture on here. It's raised. You can hear it. It's got all sorts of colours. So I'm going to use that on here as well. Um, I have this piece as well. I'm wondering, I might add this over the photograph, possibly, or up there. Okay, so we're going to have a bit of Edith Holden here. I want this so that you can see the Edith Holden. I think realistically I might have to rip this a little bit more. So I feel like I want more of the writing but I don't want to obviously cover up all that. That it was the. Um, another way I love adding texture to a page is using um, corrugated card. I'm not doing that in this one. I was thinking of it, but I'm not doing that in this one. And she's going to go on there so you can see some of the writing. Um, I have this piece. It's the leaves. I did um, another page in here with these embossed leaves and this is what's left of them. So obviously I want to use that. I don't need it completely inked, but because it's embossed, if I just rub over it a little bit with my um, stamp pad, it just picks up the color. So it brings that color down a little bit. She's gonna go there. Then I love this piece and it's the only pop of colour on here, which may seem a little bit odd, but I feel it works. So you may disagree, but it's my crafty piece. <laughs> so I have some burlap fabric, especially fabric like this is a great way of adding texture as well. I'm thinking I may stitch that all the way down. If I put this up a little bit and then this down, it gives me different layering, which is fun. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch that all together, guys, because then we can stick it down and I'll come back. Okay, guys, there we go. Now, stitching also adds texture, but you can hand stitch if you haven't got a sewing machine or you can buy stitched stamps. And especially if you're doing that in something flat, if you did it with embossing powder, that would give you like a raised feel to the stitching. When I stitch, I like to leave the threads and I also like to do more than one line of stitching often when I'm doing it. I mean, it's just so cute already, guys. <laughs> Um, okay, so in the background here, I wanted to add just a few things, but I also want to add some embossing um, texture paste, which I could add here. Okay, let's have a look. There's my texture paste. Right, we have this, which I've been using. I just recently got that. And I was thinking, I have these two stencils. I think that might look quite nice behind there. So that is what we're going with. We're going to use this one. So obviously, using things like texture paste will obviously, in the name, give you texture. Um, and it will depend, there's different thicknesses of paste that you could use. See, this one's quite thin. The one I'm used to using is a lot thicker than this one. Um, so I'm trying to hold that down, sorry, so that you can see, but also so that I can put that down. Obviously, I don't need it in the middle because that's where the image or the little decorative piece is going to be. Yeah, this is a lot thinner, this one. I feel like I often need several layers when using this texture paste. Um, 
I definitely prefer the Tim Holtz clear white texture paste but this was on offer and I decided to try it because you just don't know do you okay yeah all right so that's that it's a bit squiffy there but that's okay and I'm going to dry that quickly okay so that's dry enough um the good thing about this being thinner is where I've done it slightly thinner you can still see the paper underneath so you know that adds texture too that will go over the top of there I do have some stamps I was thinking about adding I've got these ones uh, they're just clear stamps from the works here in the UK um, and I'm going to use my Versamark vintage sepia because I want a lighter colour I'm going to go with this one just thinking about doing it in a few places again I think here might be quite good let's get rid of that let's put this piece of card underneath and then I can put that. I mean, realistically, that could have been in black. Okay, that's smudged a little bit, but that's okay. I don't mind. And then let's do another one up here. You've got to remember when you've used a matte medium, don't move the stitching, uh, the stamping too much. Okay, that's a better look like so and then I feel like I might want it off to the edge too like so okay let's put that first of all let's stamp this off excuse my arm guys right let's move these off to the side where's the little there it is Okay, and we have this three as well that I'm still thinking I might put somewhere. I'll rip it off there. I still need the number on here anyway. Um, but could do something like that maybe. Or up here so that it's slightly on, slightly off even over here hmm um also i do have where is it i have some of this i love this of off the edge of perforated pieces of paper that i've used and i just think that adds something straight away to there let's rip that edge a little bit more ink that up Glue it down onto there. I'm not gluing everything yet. I've left the back of the photo open because I want to add something else there too. So let's do this like so. Perfect. And I have some thread. Um, this is that cheap stuff that like is ridiculously cheap and you can't really use it. Why is it caught on um, like in your sewing machine and things? You can use it to stitch, hand stitch with, but like, yeah. I want to put that kind of behind there. And again, this is a great way of adding texture because you're adding threads or um, um, fabric and things like that. Trying to get it to where I like it. Okay, I like it like that. So I need to now stick this photo down and hopefully... That will keep those threads in place. 
if I do that. Like so. There we go. So we've got texture paste. We've got some background texture added. I really do like this three. Maybe. Uh, is this day 23? It is. So I could put a different two there and have the three of this as the three. Okay. That's good. All right. So we've got that like so. Uh, I'm just having a look if there's anything else that I want. Got some of this fun stuff, but I don't think we need that. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I do have some, um, what's it called? Book, book spine. I do have some of that, and I do love using this um, as well. That looks quite good there. It's very white, but we do have the brown on the other side. We may not need it. I mean, I just like it, but we may not need it. All right. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to stick this down now onto the page. Give it a really good glue because of all the different embossing and textures, funny enough. Um and stitching and all of that so I'm leaving the threads from the stitching too really getting the edges although another way to give texture is not to stick everything down flat and to be able to like lift edges and have them look torn and all that kind of thing that's another thing you can do um, hello Topaz <laughs> down 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 you're in the light sweet girl excuse me okay so we've got that and then I have brought and I don't know how these are going to go but they're glass texture beads and I don't even know what they look like I mean it just looks like I don't know if they dry clear. That's the thing. I mean, worst comes to worst, I can ink over them. They've got, I don't know if you can see that, it's got very tiny little beads in it. And I was just thinking of adding some of those. I mean, I've only just got them. Ooh. So I don't know. But the texture beads, so I'm hoping they dry clear. And then you can kind of see the beads in it I don't know again another way of adding texture but if you don't have these texture paste then um, I know there's plenty of videos online where it can show you how to make your own text basic texture paste um, and I'm sure if you change the consistency of that, you can do these. Topaz, please, sweet girl. No, no, not, not at the moment, darling. She did this yesterday as well. I was trying to film and she was in every video. And then as soon as I came off camera, she, um, right, there are texture pastes everywhere, Topaz. I don't want you getting in them on you. Um, yeah, so I don't know how this is going to look. I've never worked with these, but I'm hoping as they dry, they dry clear. If they don't dry clear, then I will ink over the top of them. So it is what it is kind of thing. Just adding it in random places. Just to, I really, I'm really trying to get the one, the one with the most kind of beads in it. So I want that effect. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to look. I'm going to bring it up to see if you can see. Because you can see some of the beads just there. I don't know. And I'm wondering if it's one of those things that will dry better if I leave it to dry, clear, uh, dry on its own. Where is my 
cloth right and the other last thing I wanted to add is I've got some of the Tim Holtz crackle paste translucent I love crackle paste oh my god it's such a nightmare to open though because it sticks hold on okay I got it open but what I forgot is I do actually want to add some rub-ons first and it just works better if I put the rub-ons first because I don't know where I'm going to add the crackle paste so I want June, uh, do I want June 1929? I want this one just here, June 29th. So I want this one first. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going to add the crackle paste yet. Um, again you can do this with stamping I just find um, when I've got lots of layers that stamping can be a bit more problematic so I like the rub-ons June 29 and where is the 1923 bit 1932 rather so yeah it really help if I had something really flat underneath to be able to rub on Hold on guys, sorry, I've got my arm in the way again. Okay, that went in there. So we have the rub on. And I was wondering about like, um, this is where stamping had come in easier, like the received bit just there or something. Or something along there. Uh, we are also going to add a word, so let's have a look at this. Um, uh, buh, 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 buh. Mm. She is brave. Own your story. There we go. I'm going to have this one. I might have that on there. That might be where this needs to go. Own. Up there. Now I feel like it needs to go down there. Right, so I do need to really stick this down because it's going to be on lots of different layers. Own your story. Like so. Let's hold that down a minute. Okay, so that's that. Where did that three go to? That two go to that I kept looking at. Oh, where do I put things, guys? It's only a small space. That three. I'm thinking down here, maybe. Yeah, right. Let's put that on with some Mod Podge. Let me just get my brush and just dry it off. Yeah, I don't know what these are going to dry like. So this is a complete experiment, guys. But I bought it, so might as well experiment with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that needs to dry. And I also, like I said, I want to put some crackle paste on. <laughs> because I haven't thrown enough at this page. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the crackle paste translucent. This will, you won't be able to, um, 
this won't dry on camera. I'm going to have to let this dry and take its time. You might think, what's the point of putting the rub-ons there? Well, hopefully this will dry clear so you will be able to see the rub-on through the cracked piece. That's what I'm hoping. So right now it just looks very, very white and very, very weird. But that will change once it goes clear where it's not on ink. Um, obviously, if you're using a wet medium over inks, it will change colour with the ink. So, down like that. Um, yeah, I never know what I'm going to get with a crackle paste because I just never know how fine and detailed the crackles will be. It does depend on how thick you apply it. And I find it also depends on what medium it's on. Okay, so this just needs to dry so I can stamp the two on there. Okay, guys, so I dried that. The um, glass beads are starting to dry a little bit, so you can see them a bit better there. I don't know. I don't know. We've thrown everything at this page, guys. I think I'm going to use the two from this rub-on. like so and I'm going to put that down there because it's day 23 and yeah I like that I like that they're different where's their board and rub that on Hope that it goes on really well. Yeah. So that's today's one, guys. Lots of different textures here. Once it's dry, there'll be lots to kind of touch and everything. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I will come back and show you what it's like once it's completely dry and the crackle paste has gone clear and... Um, these have dried well enough and whether I've needed to ink them or not so I will come back with that but that's it for the moment guys unless I want no I don't want anything else anywhere else leave it leave it Belle leave it and walk away so yeah I'll come back and share it with you with what it's like once it's completely dry so it's all dried a little bit. The um, glass beads do actually dry clear, which is quite nice. But I've gone over some of it with some ink. So you can really see, I really hope that's picking up the crackling here. If I bring it up, you can really see it and you can see through the words. You can see the glass beads now and here. And you'll also see that I've splattered it with a little bit of gold and some black just to add a bit more interest. You can see here where I put all that crackle paste that it has crackled a little bit, not as much as I would have liked, but it has gone clear so you can see through it. And even the bit that went onto the, um, some of the crackle paste went on to the uh, thread that also dried clear. So that's it. That's page 23. I really love how it looks. I like um, the fact that I added splattering. I think there's lots of different kinds of texture. There's texture in the background. There's um, stamping, stencil paste, embossed papers, uh, burlap, threads. Uh, even these add in texture. Um, the glass beads and the crackle paste. There's lots of different types of texture. I really, really like it. I know it's suddenly gone very, very dark, but I wanted to share this with you. So that is it for day 23. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the links down below to Meg and Get Crep Messy Art. Um, and there is a playlist for Junk Journal January, everything I've done so far in on my channel, if you're interested in that. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having lots and lots of crafty fun. Bye.